Wangari Maasai will forever be remembered as a devoted environmental and social activist. She is the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize laureate and the founder of the Green Belt Movement, an organization that has planted over 45 million trees to reverse severe environmental degradation and has helped empower women and the poor in her native Kenya and in countries around the world. Wangari Maathai's vision and work represents a significant turning point for the people of the world. Wangari Maasai was born on April 1, 1940, in the beautiful green central hills of Kenya. She grew up in rural areas where trees were everywhere and there was rich, fertile soil. Drought and starvation were virtually unknown of, and poverty was very rare. All was well until the British controlled Kenya as a colony. Land was converted into farmland for white settlers. And so the Africans were then concentrated to small and drier parts of that region. So in fact, much of the struggle for Kenya's independence started in fact with uh, fighting over access to land. So it doesn't surprise me at all that in fact she developed a very sharp uh, interest in environmental conservation. In her early years, Wangari Maathai witnessed Kenya's independence from Great Britain in 1956 as a result from a violent revolution called the Mau Mau Rebellion. A few years later, Maathai benefited from an opportunity to study in the United States as part of a scholarship program called the Kennedy Lift that sought to give promising young Kenyans leadership opportunities. After five years away from her homeland, Mathai happily returned to Kenya to become the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a PhD. But while studying for this honorary degree at the University of Nairobi, she noticed some massive changes to Kenya. During this time she was away, the government had made a disastrous choice to transition from growing their own food to growing cash crops, such as tea and coffee. As a result, the people were unable to buy food with that money because there was no food. The villagers were starved. The trees were cut down to make way for tea plantations, so natural streams dried up. Because all the trees were cut, firewood was scarce and soil erosion occurred, which resulted in the loss of thousands of tons tons of valuable topsoil. Without fertile topsoil, successful farming was practically impossible. Wangari noticed more poverty, more malnutrition, more hunger, and more unemployment than ever before. I was hearing many rural women complain about the fact that they did not have firewood. They were also complaining that they did not have enough water. Why not plant trees? I asked the women. Mathai knew she could not let the environment and the people suffer anymore, so as a devoted member of the National Council of Women of Kenya, she founded the Green Belt Movement in 1977. Rural women were the main participants involved in the Green Belt Movement because in developing parts of the world, women were housekeepers and 75% of farmers were women. Planting trees was by far Wangari's best idea because it was cheap, simple, efficient, and it was a task uneducated rural women could easily do. The Green Belt Movement not only planted trees to prevent deforestation, but also to empower women in a time when women were dependent on men and relegated to second-class citizenship. In fact, according to the U.S. Department of State regarding women in Kenya, the average monthly income of women is about two-thirds that of men, and women hold only about 5% of land titles. However, planting trees made these rural women feel they had the ability to improve their poverty situation without the government's aid. By planting trees, women could walk shorter routes to collect firewood for fuel and gather clean drinking water from catchment areas. Also, in Kenya, trees provide 75% of household energy, wood for building, fodder for livestock, nutritious fruits, and shade from the scorching sun. Because of this organization, poor rural women could finally control their own lives. Because we were dealing with the poor people, we also wanted to give them an income. So we said, you plant the tree. If you make it survive, we will give you a token of appreciation. From donations and fundraisers, the Green Belt Movement has provided tens of thousands of families with sufficient income to live on. 
As this movement became more and more successful and well known, when Gari Mathai knew she had to spread her message to other countries that were in the same situation as Kenya. So in 1992, Mathai and the Green Belt Movement created the Pan African Green Network to help spread their experience to many other nations. And those same approaches are still used today by 30 different countries. Mathai tried to be more politically active because she noticed the linkages between environment and government. The corruption in government authority was responsible for much deforestation by illegally selling public land to private developers. In 1992, when Gary Mathai led a hunger strike against the government in Freedom Corner, Uru Park, with mothers of political prisoners, demanding that their sons be released. In the past, a group of rural women would never dare anger the government. Mathai was clubbed unconscious during this demonstration and required serious hospitalization for her critical condition. Eventually, the prisoners were released, and Mathai began to see more and more women standing up for their rights and the environment. When Gari Mathai's political activism was so effective, it was life-threatening. In 1992, Mathai found herself on a government list for assassination. Mathai protected herself with her supporters in her home for three days, while 150 policemen tried to break in. She was charged for sedition and treason, but eventually she was released after international pressure. In addition, Mathai has constantly been publicly vilified by President Daniel Arap Moy himself because he realized he would lose power if women became more independent. <laughs> When Gari Mathai's methods were so efficient, even well-respected leaders pleaded for her assistance. In 1995, Al Gore, the former Vice President of the United States, requested Wangari Mathai and the Green Belt Movement for their services to be utilized in Haiti, a severely environmentally deteriorated country. Mathai immediately got right to work by aiding Haitian groups to replicate the Green Belt techniques. Unfortunately, due to uncooperative locals and massive corruption in the Haitian government, the attempt has still not succeeded, but the Green Belt movement is still trying their hardest. In 2002, when Gary Mathai was elected to parliament with an overwhelming 98% of the vote, in addition, Mathai served as the Assistant Minister for the Environment and Natural Resources for five years. Wangari Mathai achieved a countless number of awards, but her work was most recognized when she won the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize, one of the highest honors one could achieve. The Norwegian Nobel Committee praised her for her holistic approach to sustainable development that embraces democracy, human rights, and women rights in particular. The Nobel Committee recognized when they gave her the Nobel Peace Prize, the first environmentalist to ever achieve that prize, I think they recognize that you can't have a peaceful and just society if you don't have a healthy environment and an environment that is equitable for everybody who's living in a place. And she brought that to the world's attention. When Gari Mathai had a major influence on the environment, economic, social, and political reforms. Today, there is a Wangari Mathai Institute for Peace and Environmental Studies devoted to spreading her vision and work. In addition, 80% of 15 million seedlings planted by the Green Belt Movement have matured, and this encourages the government of Kenya to increase its spendings for more tree seedlings. In addition to the seeds she planted, friendships among the women grew as they worked together to plant trees. The men in Kenya also developed a new respect for women because of the success of the Green Belt Movement. There were many turning points in Wangari Mathai's personal life which enabled her to have a significant impact upon the world and so many of its people. So those three things, basically environmental conservation, uh, human welfare, and, and the greater liberties for women are three things that had up to that time really been pursued separately. And her life and movement really managed to bring them together, in fact, as a force for global peace, which is really why she got the Nobel Prize for Peace. Yeah,